Here we are at the entrance to the Hulak Caves. Originally, they came down as far as the Hulbach Gorge. Some rainwater still flows into the gorge, especially when the caves are completely flooded. Ahead of us stretches the longest cave system in Western Europe, and the second longest in Europe as a whole. 197 kilometers of passages have already been measured in the cave, and every year another 700 to 1,000 meters more are investigated. The formation of stalactites and stalagmites is the reverse of the process of cave evolution. Limestone is dissolved by water to create hollows. But in the case of stalactites, water and limestone are separated out by dripping. The result is limestone of the purest crystalline form, giving rise to exquisite shapes. The coloring of the stalactites varies depending on the substances dissolved in the water and limestone, which may be organic, or most likely, impurities caused by sulfur or iron, which give these stalactites their wonderful color. The best temperature for the formation of stalactites is around 12 to 16 degrees Celsius, but the hulach is on average only 6 degrees, which means that the chemical conditions for their formation are not ideal here. According to legend, Hulak was discovered in 1875 by a local man, Alois Ulrich. But it's improbable that the people of the valley knew nothing about it before then. That's because maps previous to 1875 used a field name related to Hull to designate this area. Conducting research in the Hulak system is so fascinating because, at a time when you can fly around the world in a plane, send rockets to the moon and space probes to Mars, you can still find places on Earth never seen before by anyone. You can use technology to assist in cave exploration, but nature is in charge here. That's very impressive. If you spend a long time in a cave, you lose all sense of time. You don't think about day and night, only waking, and sleeping phases. <laughs>